Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about two topics in C. The first topic we're going to talk about are two-dimensional arrays. A two-dimensional array is basically a situation where we have an array where all of the elements in the array are actually arrays themselves. The second thing I want to talk to you guys about is nested loops. So we're going to look at how we can use a looping structure where we have a loop inside of a loop. So it's gonna be pretty cool. And actually these two topics can go together really well. And I'm gonna show you guys how we can use nested loops and two dimensional arrays in order to make an awesome program. So let's get started. The first thing I want to show you guys is two dimensional arrays. So down here, we can create a 2d array. And actually the concepts that I'm showing you in this video can apply to multi dimensional arrays. So not only two dimensions, but three, four or five, really as many dimensions as your heart desires. So in order to create a two dimensional array, I'm just going to make an array of numbers. So I'm just going to say int and we'll give this a name. So why don't we just say nums. And normally when we create an array, after we'd say the name of the array, we'd make an open and closed square bracket. But when we create a two dimensional array, we're going to make two open and closed square brackets, just like that. These two open and closed square brackets will basically represent like the width and the height of our array. So you guys will see what I mean in a second, but basically we're going to have like elements in the array and then each of those elements is going to be an array and we'll have elements inside of it. So these two squares will allow us to like manipulate all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this equal to um, an open and closed curly bracket. Now this is normally how we would create an array. So normally I would just say like one, two, three, four, whatever. I could put all my numbers in here. But with a two dimensional array, all of the elements are going to be arrays. So instead of just saying like one, two, three, we're actually going to create arrays inside of here. So for example, I'll put an array right here. And this text editor is so annoying with making these. So for example, the first element in this array, I could just make an array. So I'm going to say this is like one, two. So you can see here, I have two elements inside of this array, which is itself the first element of the nums array. So let's make another one. I'm going to come down here and we'll make another one. And this keeps trying to format differently. So now we're going to say three, four. So this thing right here, this whole array, that's the first element in the nums array, right? And that array has two elements inside of it. Same thing with this one. This is the second element in the nums array and it has two elements inside of it. So it's basically an array within an array. Let's make one more. And so this is going to be five, six. So now we have three array elements, right? One, two, three, and each of them has two elements inside of them. So whenever we create a two dimensional array like this, we always have to specify the number of elements and then the number of elements inside each array. So in our case, we're going to have one, two, three elements in the array and each array has two elements inside of it. So it's going to look like that. So we would say three and then two, and that's basically how we create it. So now let's talk about accessing these elements. So I'm going to create a little print statement here and we're going to print out some of this stuff. So I'm going to, say percent D and I'm going to show you guys how we can access individual elements. So basically I'm going to say nums and let's say that I wanted to access this top left element, this one. The first thing I want to do is specify the index where uh, the value that I want to access is stored. So like this would be index position zero, this would be index position one, this would be index position two. So we're going to say zero. And then I want to specify the index position of the individual element inside of zero. So I could say like, this is element zero, this is element one. So why don't we access element zero? So I print out nums zero zero, and this is going to print out that number. It's going to print out that one for us. You can see over here, we get that one. So let's try a different one. Let's try to grab this four right here. So this is going to be at index position one and then one. So this will be at one, one. And now we should get that four. Let's see. Yeah, cool. So we get the four. All right. So that's basically how we can access elements inside of these arrays. And also just want to point out that um, if I didn't want to give this an initial value, I could just like put a semicolon here and I could just like manually define each index location. So I could say like zero, zero is equal to seven or something. 
I, I like I don't have to give it a um, a value like right up front. Although in our case, let's just do that because it's a lot easier. All right, so we have our nums array and we figured out how we can print out the elements. So now I wanna to talk to you guys about another concept which is called a nested for loop. And you guys will see in a second why I'm teaching this alongside uh, 2D arrays. But a nested for loop is a situation where we have a for loop and inside of that for loop, we have another loop. So I'm gonna show you guys this really quick. Let's say we create a for loop. I'm gonna create two variables over here, int i and int j. And I don't know if I've showed you guys this in the course yet, but if I wanna just like declare two variables, I can just say i comma j, and that'll declare both variables. Now, I'm not giving them actual values yet. We're gonna do that inside these for loops. So I wanna show you guys how we can use a nested for loop in order to print out all of the elements inside of this two-dimensional array. So I'm gonna say for i is equal to zero, and we're gonna keep looping as long as i is less than three. And the reason I'm saying three here is because that's how many elements are inside of this nums array. So I'm gonna keep looping as long as i is less than three, and then I'm gonna say i plus plus. Now, inside of these curly brackets, I wanna create another loop. So every time we go through this uh, one iteration of this top loop, we're gonna fully execute through another loop. So I'm gonna say for j is equal to zero, j is less than two. And the reason I'm saying two here is because that's how many elements are inside each array inside of the nums array. And you guys will see in a second why uh, this is gonna work. And then I'm gonna say j plus plus. So now I'm gonna make some more open and close curly brackets. And down here, I'm gonna actually be able to print out all of the elements inside of this array. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna say print f and we're gonna be printing out an integer because these are all integers and we're gonna be printing out nums and I'm gonna print out nums i and j. So whatever the value of i is and whatever the value of j is, that's the index position inside of nums that we're gonna print out. And now just so this is formatted a little bit better, why don't we put a comma? right there. And then I'm also going to put another print F over here. That's just going to print out a new line. And you'll notice that this print F is outside of this inner for loop. So I'm going to run this program. We're going to see what it does. You guys will see exactly what's happening. And then I'll sort of walk you through a little bit more what is going on. So let's run this program. And you'll see over here when we ran the program, we're basically getting this entire 2D array printed out. So I'm printed out one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's talk about why that happens. Over here, I'm saying four i is equal to zero, i is less than three, i plus plus. So I'm going through this particular for loop three times. I'm gonna execute all the code inside of this for loop right here three times. That's as many times as there are elements inside of our 2D array. Now, every single time I go through this top loop, every single time I go through it, I'm going to execute this loop in its entirety. So I will loop through this loop all the way through. I'll go through all of its iterations. And this loop says j is equal to zero, j is less than two. And two over here is how many elements are inside of each one of these arrays. So this element in the nums array has one, two elements inside of it this element in the nums array has one, two elements inside of it, right? That's where this two is coming from. Then I'm incrementing j, and I'm gonna print out, so I'm saying print f, and I'm printing out nums at index position i and index position j. So the first time we go through this for loop, i is gonna be equal to zero. And remember, that first time, we're actually gonna be going through this loop two times. So we're gonna be printing out nums zero zero and nums zero one. And then we're coming down here and printing a new line. The next time we go through this I loop, we're gonna come down here and print nums one zero and nums one one. Finally, the third and final time, we're gonna print out nums two zero and nums two one. That's basically how this is working. So 
Two-dimensional arrays and nested for loops are a match made in heaven. And there's a lot of situations where, you know, besides just looping through 2D arrays that we're gonna use nested loops. But hopefully this gives you a little bit of a introduction into what they are and why they're useful. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.